So, how's everybody doing today? Got... I saw the bunny. You saw a bunny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carhood slippery, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, today, I want to have a discussion here. Kind of a life-changing event. Yep, and I showed a bunny today. Yes, you did. You tried, I, you tried chasing it. And it was a, and it was a brown one. And it was brown. You got scratches on your legs. Yeah, it's from me falling. Yeah, it's from you falling. Yeah. No, I was chasing it. But, but today, I would just want to talk about something. It's kind of life-changing. Uh. Our house. You see our house here behind me? It's the one directly behind my head. Uh, it is officially 100% free and clear paid off. We just got it done. Now, yeah, it's, all ours. it's all ours. Yep. But this house was not in the master plan, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm a country boy. I grew up. So this is kind of a, a strange atmosphere for me. But, uh, so we got some, we're kind of at a fork in the road, if you know what I mean. Being that the house is paid off, I could easily find a property that I'd like, sell the house and go for another one. You know, something that I would prefer to have. But I'm kind of reluctant because this is kind of monumental here just to, to be out of that payment. And do I really want to get another payment, you know? It, it's, that's kind of a decision to make, you know? Uh, I'm also thinking about moving out of the basement. I'm thinking about throwing a shed, like a probably a 10 by 12 shed, just buying one of those sheds that they drop off at your place. I'm thinking about purchasing one of them, sticking out there and moving the saw shop stuff into the shed. But it's kind of convenient having it in the basement because I never have to worry about air conditioning. It's always cool. And I never have to worry about heat because I got a wood burner down there. You know? But I might lose the wood burner. At least in the basement. See, our flue is not in the greatest shape. It's, uh, so either I gotta do a bunch of work to the flue this year or build another one or something. The, uh, I already lined it, but the brick itself is, it's got mortar issues. And some of the bricks are starting to get loose and, you know, I shouldn't use it anymore in its current state. Now the flu, it runs right down smack middle of the house. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, you can't even see it. It's up there, it's behind that peak. It runs right smack down the center of the house. So to repair it, I'm literally pulling walls apart. And then my other option is to build another one up the side of the house. But if I do that, it would put the wood burner in a bad position in the basement because the, it, it, the flue would have to go exactly where the furnace is sitting or the, the wood burner would have to be exactly where the furnace is sitting. And you know, that's, that would involve a lot of work. So right now I'm thinking repair the flue. I do plan on doing a bunch of renovations to the house anyway, and as I do the renovations, the flu will be exposed. So I could kind of take that path. I could even tear the whole flu down internally, you know, inside the house and put a new one up because the renovations will end up exposing it all. You know, now I want to talk about Tasman saw here for a second. I gotta sit in here, running into some issues. All right, so here's Tasman's little rocket home light chainsaw that I put together. And I'm having an issue with, with it not wanting to idle. 
I believe, I think it's a carb ratio. Let me explain. So, uh, the carburetor I have in Tasman Saw, it's large enough that it would feed a 100cc saw. And I think the carburetor just might be too big. Uh, it runs good, it does, but it won't idle. Yep. Uh, it's loading up at idle is what's going on. And if you try to lean it out, then it goes, you, get, you end up getting to the point where you're too lean and you have trouble at cold start. Daddy, fireworks! But I think it's an issue of the uh, carburetor just being too big. Uh, I think we'll pull it out, try a smaller one. And go from there. I Originally, I needed this carburetor, but I did step back on the porting work because it was a little too aggressive. And I'm going to have to try to, I think, put a different carburetor in it. What's you doing, guys? <laughs> you know, I, so what's going on is... I'm saying loading up, but it's not really loading up. It's uh, the, the fuel is puddling, puddling up in the crankcase. So it'll sit there and idle, but it's say you can let it idle for a minute or two. It'll sit there and do it. Um, but as soon as you touch the saw, the, the, the puddle or whatever that's in the crankcase ends up, you know, getting pushed up and floods out, or shouldn't say floods out, but. Uh, kind of kind of you know it stalls the saw uh, it's definitely puddling up in a crankcase though so i'm thinking that's being caused because the air velocity through the carburetor at idle because the carburetor you know the throat or the uh, velocity or whatever you want to call it or the the venturi of the carburetor i should say i think the venturi of the carburetor is too big for this build and it's causing a reduction in the air velocity, which isn't atomizing the fuel correctly at idle. But as soon as I take it to RPM, there's enough air velocity that you know, it runs Dad. fine. Daddy. So I think I need to find a, a carburetor that's just a little bit Dad, smaller, down. which I have them. I have dozens, at least a dozen carburetors sitting here. So I, I'm sure I have one and it's not gonna hurt to try, what, try it, you know what I mean? Tasman, if you're wondering what's delaying me, that's what's going on. I just, I'm not happy with this saw at idle. It's, it's cutting fine, but at idle, it just, it sucks. Uh, you're fine as long as you just keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting. But as soon as you want to try to let it idle for a little bit, as soon as you grab that saw, it just shuts off on you. And it gets annoying after a while. At first, you're like, yeah, I can live with this. But then after a while, it gets annoying. And I want to try to fix that. I see any reason it's getting delayed right now. So, Tasman, if you're wondering, that's that's what's going on. Um, oh, also, Tasman, I'm going to need your address. I, I used to have it, and I don't know what I did with it. So, if you don't mind sending me an email, give me your address. I am actually pretty close to this saw. It's, I have a feeling once I throw a carburetor on there, it's going to run and be done. I had just I got a feeling that's all I got left to do. And I already got them, but we'll, uh, we're actually, the next time we run this saw, we're going to run it differently, but we're going to set the camera up differently. We're going to set up two cameras. We're going to run the phone like normal, but then I'm going to run the GoPro and I have one of those head mounts. I'm going to throw it on my head and we're going to get two camera angles, but we're also going to use a tack to see exactly what the RPM in the cut is, okay? We know from the factory, I think it was, uh, is it six or 8,000 RPM in the cut from the factory? And I think it was rated up to 24 inch bar. But I'm curious to see what this thing actually does in the cut. Now I do own an XL76, so we could do a side-by-side -side comparison, if you'd like. I could run the 76 in the wood, 
and then switch the bar and chain over to the 130 and see how it does and you'll see a comparison there if you'd like to do that we can do that too and then we'll get it shipped off to Taz, man. Uh, I think maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do the 76 as well, side-by-side -side comparison. Um, we'll put, we'll go ahead and we'll use a 24-inch uh, bar. Um, I usually, I've been uh, using the 28-inch bar semi-chisel chain, but I think we'll go with the 24-inch bar with full chisel, full house. Uh, that's kind of the standard what everybody uses, so we'll go with that setup on this next test run just to see. I think that's what we'll do the next go around. We got fireworks. Hello, that's good. <laughs> it's Memorial Day today, so people are celebrating. Uh, it's funny we get these fireworks in the city, you know. <laughs> but uh, that's where we're at there. Uh, I'm thinking another week and I'll be ready to ship this saw out to Tasman, hopefully. Weather pen, per, weather permitting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, weather permitting. Uh, I kind of got rained out this weekend, but, um, you know, I got rained out. Here comes more. But, uh, Hopefully we can get this thing finished and get it shipped out to Tasman. I'm curious to see how it compares to some of his other saws. Uh, he's got a uh, 372, a ported 372. I'm kind of curious to see what it does. And don't be afraid to line them up, Tasman. I want to see what they do. I'm curious. I, I know the I know the 372 is going to outperform it. I, that's nothing. I just I'm kind of curious to see how it does side by side to the 372. I really want to see it. So even if you make that the first video, I don't care. I just, that's the one request I have. I want to see how it does against your 372. Yeah, I poured it up. Uh, I just, I don't know. I really want to see it. Uh, I think that's going to be it for today. I, uh, we're kind of at a fork in the road here, making some decisions. Uh, we're going to do a few repairs to the house. And I think we're going to sell my bike. Get that sold. But, you know what, guys? Anyway, uh, I think we'll call that it for today. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, later.